Welcome back to Old School Sports and our Out of the Park Baseball 25 mini series with the Seattle Mariners. And we are about a third of the way through this 2025 season, and it's honestly been a little bit disappointing for the Mariners. A 30 and 28 record. We're third place in the AL West, only half a game out, very tightly packed division with only five games between the worst and the first. But given that uh, we made some big moves this offseason, bringing on Juan Soto and Glaber Torres, the fact that we're winning at a lower rate than we did a year ago is certainly disappointing. Soto and Torres have both had injury issues. Torres is currently on the injured list. Soto was on the injured list earlier in the year. Uh, right now, we do have some issues. Uh, Oslevis Basabe who we picked up in a trade with the Yankees, is the former Yankee who's playing third base for us right now, rather than Torres. And Andrew McCutcheon, who we picked off the scrap heap as a minor league free agent, is starting in our outfield right now uh, because of the injury to Mr. Canzone. One other thing that stands out, Paul Goldschmidt leads the team with nine homers and is third with 28 ribbies but he's hitting a brutal 156, and he's striking out in almost a third of his at-bats. So he's got a 50 WRC+, plus, and he's already a win below replacement level. He's almost 38 years old, and it seems like he's gotten old rather quickly. We didn't want to sign him to a long-term deal this past offseason, uh, but we did offer him a qualifying offer, which he somewhat surprisingly to us accepted because he said he was looking for four years at over 20 million a year right before he accepted that offer but maybe he knew uh in his heart and in his body that he was not going to be what he used to be uh that being said his BABIP is a buck 74 down 100 points from a year ago and 150 points from two years ago looking at his ratings it seems like that is unsustainably low. So my hope is that we still do get some more productivity out of him in what is likely his final season with the Mariners and quite possibly maybe his final season as a major leaguer. Soto, J-Rod are both healthy right now. Uh, the hope is that they will get much more productive going forward and hopefully we can uh, guide this team back into the playoffs. And before we start moving forward and trying to figure out uh, if we can guide this team to more success in the last four months of the season than we did over the first two months of the season, I uh, just want to mention the upcoming long play that hopefully will be starting within the next couple of weeks, but I'm still waiting for at least one more patch at this point. I know that uh, they did make some tweaks to international amateur free agency and the amateur draft with the uh, patch that came out about a week ago, but to me, there are still some imbalance issues with the game. You may remember when we did international amateur free agency a couple of episodes ago, we ended up going with Jesus Ayala, who is now considered the number one prospect in all of baseball, and there were I believe between hitters and pitchers, about a dozen, if not more, five-star prospects in international amateur free agency, along with a number of people who had three-and-a-half, four, four-and-a-half-star type potential, probably a couple dozen players that met those lofty criteria. And obviously, they're not all going to reach their true potential. That's part of the fun of the game and what makes it interesting. But I still feel like IAFA is far overpowered compared to the draft. Uh, this is the 2025 draft that's coming up. And when we take a look at the draft pool here, you can see for position players, there are, and we have a very good scout. We have a highly favored tools scout. And you can see that we've got very high scouting accuracy on the pool at this point. And there are literally a handful of players, position players, that we think are kind of above major league average potential. 
and it's not really much better with the pitchers basically a handful of pitchers who we think have uh the potential to be above ma major league average players so to me the pool just still is not deep enough uh, as far as the first year player draft in terms of players with some upside potential. This was also an issue in OOTP 24. And after you got through those first three drafts or so, it did kind of get more balanced. Uh, so I'm hopeful that that will happen with OOTP 25 as well. But it is still... Um, it seems like something that they could dial up um, these classes a bit just to make the game uh, a little more balanced. It kind of stinks to have these early years of the draft basically be complete wastelands. And unfortunately, that's kind of my assessment of uh, what they potentially look like right now, which doesn't seem completely realistic. I get that maybe you think... These drafts are weaker than the drafts two, three, four, five years ago. But just doing simple math, um, although you're going to strike out rather than hit a home run with more draftees than not, and that's the nature of the amateur draft, that's the nature of baseball, that's the nature of international amateur free agency as well. Uh, these players are so young, and you're projecting four, five, six, seven years ahead to when they grow up and they might end up in the major league so the hit rate is not going to be high and that's completely understandable but the fact that the upside of the pool is so low and there are so few potential impactful players is something that i still think needs to be tweaked and improved and hopefully that'll happen with the next patch All right, with my whining slash pleading slash pontification done, we will move on with the episode and see if we can get this team playing better over the month of June. And the whining has begun. Christian Vasquez unhappy with his role. Uh, it is kind of interesting that in OOTP, anytime somebody whines, they always tend to be hitting below the Mendoza line. Hitting just a buck 97 in 66 at bats this year says he didn't come here to be a role player. Well, you didn't sign with us, Christian. We traded for you, and we envisioned you as our backup catcher, starting only against left handed pitching from the start. And you happen to be on a roster with Cal Rally, who's six years younger than you and putting up a 124 WRC plus this year while also playing pretty good defense. So keep whining. Why don't you try to play better? Maybe you'll get a little more playing time if you can get the batting average off the interstate. Christian. And despite my whining and Vasquez whining, we've gotten off to a pretty good start here in the month of June. Uh, three straight wins all one-run games at home. Uh, the negative is that Glaber Torres uh, suffered a setback in that recovery from his strained quad, going to be two to three weeks before he's ready. Still supposedly only a minimal influence on his running. Uh, he was... The quad strain was something that was going to impact him for about six weeks when it first happened, and we had him playing through it for a couple of weeks to keep his bat in the lineup. He then suffered a concussion, and with those two injuries and the concussion being much more serious in terms of his impact, we put him on the IL. At this point, since he's already on the IL, I think I'm just going to keep him there. Uh, we're playing okay right now. Would rather ensure that we hopefully have him healthy for the last three-plus months of the season than turn this into something that becomes even more serious and uh, sidelines him for an extended period of time. So hopefully we'll have him back by later this month, and he'll be 100% the rest of the way. And we've made it to mid-June. Uh, the team has been playing much better of late. Uh, 
tied for first in the AL West with the Rangers, and uh, both of our teams have opened up six games on the Angels and eight and a half on the Astros. So uh, in a better position, uh, we're tied for being five up on the wild card in addition to our six-game lead in the division. So that is positive at this point. Uh, J-Rod playing better of late, has the batting average up to almost 300, 13 homers and 48 ribbies on the year. He ranks third in the AL in batter war. Seth Brown has actually got his batting average up to 279, 10 homers, 31 ribbies on the year, and has a 16-game hitting streak going. And the pitching staff remains excellent. Logan Gilbert and Brian Wu tied for the league lead with eight wins. Luis Castillo is second in strikeouts and first in pitcher war this season. And we've simmed ahead another week. Uh, we're still playing well. We've got the second best record in the American League, uh, but we're two games behind the Rangers now in the division. They're 9-1 and one in their last 10 best record in the AL, uh, but we are five up on the final wild card spot. So still feeling like we're in a pretty good spot here, uh, definitely playing better in June. And importantly, uh, the team is completely healthy right now. Uh, we've got Torres back. Uh, we did actually send Canzone down to the minors. Uh, we kept up Another youngster, uh, since Canzone had him been playing pretty well before his injury, um, we've had Tyler Locklear on the team, and he's hitting 330 at-bats, so he's been uh, reasonably productive for us in a small sample size as a corner infielder. And we've made it to our mid-season review. Uh, just lost one more game since we checked into Toronto. So we're three games behind the Rangers at this point in the division. Uh, taking a look at uh, ownership, 43-35 uh, and 35 record. They wanted us to make the playoffs, and we're on pace to make the playoffs, but they're still not happy with our record. They are happy that we brought George Kirby on board. Um, He's disappointed that we completely ignored his request to acquire a power hitter. Well, and if we don't reach this goal, we may need to update our CV. Well, we added Juan Soto and Glaber Torres in the offseason. They've both been injured, so they haven't put up incredible home run statistics yet. But uh, if you don't define either of those players, particularly Soto as a power hitter, I think uh, the problem may be with you, Mr. Stanton, not with me. Uh, pleased that attendance is increasing. Pleased that we brought on Ayala through the IAFA market. And uh, he's pleased with the way we've restocked the farm system, largely driven by obtaining Ayala and then helping uh, Young and Ford in particular develop, I think, with the attention we paid them in the development lab over the off season and those successful programs that they both had. So I think we've made decent progress. Uh, the team is definitely playing better. The team is healthy and uh, hope we can go into July and heading towards the all-star break and the amateur draft and uh, when the trade deadline really starts looming in a good place with this team. I definitely think we could add another bat. Always interested in trying to add another arm but uh, I don't think we're in a bad spot. And we've made it to July 1st, and uh, we'll do our mid-season review at this point. Uh, after the real good start to the month of June, we kind of stunk over the last week and a half of the season, losing six of our final seven games in the month. So as we sit here on July 1st, uh, we are still a playoff team. Uh, but we're four and a half behind the Rangers in the West. The Angels are sneaking up on us. They're back at 500. And we're only a game and a half up on the final wild card. So definitely need to play better. Taking a look at the leaderboard, uh, J-Rod is now second in batter war. Gilbert leading the league in wins. And Castillo is second in pitcher war this season. Take a look at our team statistics and try to figure out what we need to improve upon, and it's pretty clear uh, the answer is still the same. We rank 12th in runs scored 
and you can see we are generally in the bottom half of the American League in most batting categories. Uh, walks and strikeouts are two areas where we're actually pretty good, and we steal a decent number of bases. But the pitching is uh, excellent. Second in the National League and runs allowed. Best bullpen ERA, sixth best, sixth best starters ERA. And uh, we're generally in the top handful of teams in just about every pitching category. Even with the slow start, uh, we still had a 14-11 and 11 record in June. So definitely uh, bounced back a bit after that really poor month of May that we had. And uh, the 44 and 39 record that we have here on July 1st is right in line with Pythagorean expectations. So the goal is clearly to figure out a way to improve our offense. We've got over $12 million to spend uh, with the budget bump we got last offseason, or more accurately, the budget bumps we got since we got about half of the bump when the offseason was beginning and then about half of the bump when the preseason began about a month before free agency. And then also getting Mitch Hanniger and uh, Mitch Garver's contracts off the books to some extent uh, also helped us open up a little bit of money, although we're retaining pieces of both of those contracts, unfortunately, but felt like it was the best solution at the time. So I think we're gonna need to put some money into our offense before we even look at our players and do that mid-year review, just take a quick look at who's available on the trade block, and clearly there's options other than this. But uh, the batters, it is not um, necessarily the most impressive crew that's out there. Um, Tom Murphy looks like a decent bat as a catcher. Jorge Soler's got a little home run pop in the bat, as does Bobby Dahlbeck, but... Don't know that there's anyone who's going to be a massive difference maker for us, unfortunately. So we'll probably need to get a little more creative and maybe pay up for someone who's not on the trade block or wait another couple weeks till teams get a little more desperate to get rid of people if they're out of it. Clay Holmes has basically been on the trade block all year uh, from the Red Sox. Having a nice year for them, certainly an arm that could help us in our bullpen if the price for him was uh, reasonable and the Red Sox were willing to hold on to a chunk of his contract for next year also. That's something that might work for us over the next several weeks. And we'll start with our pitching where we probably need less help, uh, but it still isn't all roses. Uh, Luis Castillo, 6-6 six and six record with a 3.92 ERA. He's put up a 3.1 war for us, uh, having a good solid year as our number one starter. Possible uh, he'll be an all-star for the fourth time in his career. Would think that Logan Gilbert will likely be a Second time All Star this year, 10 and 6 with a 3.16 ERA, 2.6 WAR on the season for Gilbert. Kirby hasn't been great coming off of that injury. He actually started at 3 and 0, so he's lost seven consecutive decisions at this point and has a 5.42 ERA. Looking at his ratings, he kind of is what he's been. His control used to be a perfect 80. That's dropped a bit, but. Uh, his stuff and movement are kind of where they were before the injury. His BABIP is 317, uh, which is a bit high. Hopefully that will uh, normalize a bit. Do take some comfort in the fact that his Sierra is 3.24 and his FIT minus is 96. Those both suggest he's been an above average pitcher and is probably just getting unlucky. The main manifestation of that unluckiness is the uh, perhaps 12 home runs that he's given up in 81 and a third at-bats. Hopefully uh, that rate of allowing home runs will improve over the second half of the year. Brian Wu has kind of uh, slowed down a bit after a strong start. Still has an 8-5 and five record, uh, but the ERA is ballooned to 4.71. Also allowed 13 homers already. Uh, 3.50 Sierra. Uh, he's been fine for a fourth starter. Would have hoped maybe a little better. And you can kind of say the same thing about Bryce Miller in the five-hole, six-and-five record, 4.95 ERA. 
but his Sierra is more than a run better, and he's given up 17 home runs this year. Um, he tends to give up a lot. He gave up 38 a year ago, so I guess I shouldn't be shocked with those numbers, but uh, especially playing half of our games in Seattle, I uh, would have expected the three, four, and five pitchers in our rotation to maybe be putting up a little better numbers. So I still have confidence in Kirby. I need to after the extension that we signed him to, but could we upgrade at our fourth or fifth starter? I think it's certainly possible. I think there might also be a uh, rationale to at some point maybe give Matt Brash another try in the rotation, although he's been much better in the bullpen than he was when he was a starter those first four games of the year when Kirby was hurt. Andres Munoz uh, having a solid year as our closer, 50 strikeouts in 31 and a third innings, 14 saves, 61 fit minus, 134 ERA plus, 1.71 Sierra. Uh, he has got outstanding stuff. He throws hard, and uh, he's doing very well for us. Gregory Santos has honestly been disappointing with a 532 ERA over 23 and two-thirds innings. Uh, BABIP against him is 343, which uh, does seem high, although... Uh, he doesn't necessarily hold people to an incredibly low BABIP based on uh, the movement on his pitches. Uh, still has a 68 fit minus and a 354 Sierra this season. Looking at his ratings and the fact he still touches triple digits, I don't think he's a big problem. We've moved Gabe Spire back into a setup role from middle relief as he continues to be very effective for us. 277 ERA on the season. Jason Adam, uh, we talked about this in a previous episode, but at 33, soon to be 34 years old, he's really losing velocity quickly, and it's kind of showing with a 4.82 ERA. We brought him back as an arbitration-eligible player for $4 million this year. I don't know that we'll be bringing him back for $5 million next year, because uh, you can see his Velocity, less than a year ago, he was throwing in the mid-90s. Now he doesn't really even uh, touch 90 miles an hour anymore, so it seems like uh, the inevitable decline physically is uh, happening for Mr. Adam at the age of 33. Nick Enright uh, has been respectable as a middle reliever. He is the Rule 5 pick from Cleveland from last year. Uh, nothing exciting, but a respectable bullpen arm. Matt Brash, uh, we talked about a little bit. He started four games for us at the beginning of the year, uh, barely pitched 13 innings in those four games with his limited stamina, and he was not good. But he has been uh, pretty strong as a reliever. I tend to think we probably won't put him back into the rotation. I love the fact that he's got a four-pitch arsenal, including three excellent pitches. Uh, but the lack of stamina was certainly an issue. Um, it was straining the bullpen having him there. And he also uh, just was not very effective. Um, and see, as a starter, he put up a 7.24 ERA. He's got an ERA below one as a reliever. So he's just been much more successful in that role for us. Admittedly, they're both small sample sizes uh, over four starts and... Uh, a third of a season working out of the bullpen, but uh, the numbers in some cases may not lie. Bennett Souza, uh, another Rule 5 pick who's done a really nice job for us as a lefty out of the pen, 31 strikeouts and 26 and a third innings, 137 ERA. Uh, his fit minus and his Sierra don't indicate that he's been quite that good and he has walked 14 batters, uh, but certainly a more than respectable bullpen arm. And Taylor Saucedo, who started the year on the IL, has uh, pitched five games out of the bullpen at this point with a 2.92 ERA, gives us a third lefty arm in the pen on top of Souza and Spire, which given that our entire starting rotation is righties, um, probably makes sense to try to keep at least three lefties in the pen going forward. So... Could we add another big bullpen arm like a Clay Holmes? Certainly, if there's a good pitcher who's maybe in the final year of his contract that we could bring in to give us um, four guys at the top that we really like instead of three, that might be an option as well. 
but I don't think the pitching is where we've got the heavy lifting to do over the next month until we get to the trade deadline. And we know statistically from our uh, team's lack of scoring runs that the offense is where we're going to want to look for some help. I actually like our catcher situation. Um, Cal Rally, 255, 13 homers, 43 ribbies, 125 WRC+. Plus. A solid defensive catcher playing every day against right-handers. And then Christian Vasquez, although he's still on the interstate, hitting just a buck 91 and only his one ribby in 94 at-bats. So the offense has actually gotten worse since he asked for more playing time with a 27 WRC+. plus. Still does bring us a captain personality and some excellent defense. Uh, I think if we were to get into the playoffs, which I certainly hope that we would be, it's very possible that we would just be starting Cal Rally every day. And we also still do have Ford down in AAA, who will likely be a September call-up and is already on the 40-man roster, so he could be an option for the postseason as well. Uh, so I feel like we're in a fine position at catcher. Uh, Goldschmidt has been our DH. Um, the power numbers are good, 17 homers and 43 ribbies. Uh, the batting average of a buck 84 is not 95 strikeouts and less than 300 at bats is not good either. The BABIP has gotten up a bit to 201. Uh, still not great, but it is trending in the right direction. His WRC plus is up to 80. Uh, my thought is his stats probably will continue to improve over the second half of the year given uh, the way he's hitting, given that he's almost 38 years old, given that he's making almost $19 million, and given that he can't play defense anymore and he doesn't have any speed, I don't think it's realistic for us to um, potentially move on from him. If we could ultimately get to a point in the playoffs where he's only playing against left-handed pitchers, that would probably be optimal. Uh, taking a look at his splits for the season, um, he is hitting about uh, 40 points higher against left-handers, and his slugging percentage is about 150 points higher. 125 WRC plus against lefties, only 61 against righties. Unfortunately, uh, he's facing righties about two and a half times more often than he faces lefties, but um, he can definitely still hit against left-handed pitching. Um, $19 million is a lot to pay for a DH who only plays against lefties. But I think if we can ultimately get to the point where come playoff time, Goldschmidt is uh, more of a pinch hitter when we have a righty starting against us and plays against lefties, that could be a way to make some improvement to the offense. Tyler Locklear um, hitting 288 and 52 at bats uh, while making his major league debut. He's viewed as the number 98 prospect in baseball. 129 WRC plus for him uh, in his first stint in the majors here. He has defensive limitations. He's really a first base slash DH. Um, but although his Profile against lefties is not as good as Goldschmidt's. Uh, he's definitely better against righties at this point than Goldschmidt is, and he's certainly a lot more economical. So Locklear probably in the mix to be our starting first baseman next year, and he could be someone if we decide it's time to get Goldschmidt out of the lineup. Um, he's already playing against righties, but... Um, so he's not going to be the answer to get Goldschmidt out of the lineup. But maybe we do go back and think about bringing up um, the left-handed batter, Dominic Canzone, um, to maybe take over for Goldschmidt against righties going forward if we can't land a trade. Nick Allen uh, has been our starting uh, shortstop, although you can see his range. Well, you probably can't see this because you wouldn't remember what I was looking at a couple of episodes ago, but... His range has declined a bit, um, so we may look to kind of swap him back to second base more regularly. 
but in the limited action of just playing and starting against left-handed pitching more often than not, and occasionally starting against right-handed pitching, he's hitting 301 for us with a 108 WRC+. plus. Pretty versatile defensive player. He is not the problem. Uh, Nick Gordon has been our starting second baseman against right-handed pitching. He's hitting just 231 with a 61 WRC+. Plus. Uh, we like a lot of the positive personality traits that he has, like that he's another guy who's pretty versatile defensively, uh, but certainly would have hoped for a little more offense than he has given us so far. Dylan Moore, another guy who's in the mix as an infielder, uh, hitting 212 this year, which is the same that he hit a year ago, uh, but a lot fewer home runs. And um, that's meant that his WRC plus has dropped to an 84 this year. He's been below replacement level. Uh, he is set to be a free agent this coming off season. He'll be 33 years old in a little over a month, probably in his final stretch with the Mariners. Glaber Torres. Um, has been injured and certainly has been disappointing. 240 average, six homers, 31 ribbies on the year, 93 WRC plus. Uh, has a profile to be a more than respectable defensive third baseman. Uh, the hope is that he gets kind of more back to the type of production he's had in recent years with the Yankees and the Dodgers hitting 25 to 30 home runs a year. If uh, we can get 15 or 20 homers from him in the second half of the season, that should uh, definitely help him normalize his production for the year. And last, and hopefully not least, among the infielders, uh, shortstop J.P. Crawford, hitting 264, uh, does have 12 doubles and 269 at-bats. League average in terms of his WRC+, plus and a competent defensive infielder, playing primarily short and second for us. He's going to be making $11 million next year, probably a bit overpaid for what he is. Uh, but that said, he is a more than respectable defensive infielder. I think he'll probably still be with us next year. Although if uh, there was an interesting option in a free agency and someone was willing to take most of Crawford's contract off our hands, that would be something that we'd certainly think about investigating going forward. Turning now to our outfielders, uh, Seth Brown is a guy that we brought back who was arbitration eligible, um, and he's been solid for us this year. He did a nice job after we uh, traded for him from Oakland right before the trade deadline last year, and he's continued to be a productive offensive player this year. 254, 10 homers, 31 ribbies, and just over 200 at-bats, a 113 WRC+. Plus, uh, a competent offensive player against right-handed pitching. Uh, Corey Jolks, we picked him up in a Halloween Day trade with Houston this offseason, and he is probably um, going to be moved off the roster at this point. We've kind of viewed him as a potential fifth outfielder, but realistically thought he was maybe a 4A kind of player. And I think he's proven that um, in 103 at bats, he's hitting just a buck 75, a 20 WRC plus. He's been almost a win below replacement. Um, he's a left fielder who's now hitting ninth for us, playing just against left handed pitching. And even though uh, as a lefty batter, um, he should be doing something against left-handed pitching. You can see he's got the same buck 75 average this year against both lefties and righties. I think if we're going to um, make a move for a left-handed bat down the line that potentially could replace Goldschmidt against right-handed pitching, Jolks would be the logical person to dump. Honestly, I think we'd probably bring Canzone back right now to make that move. Um, send Jolks back down to AAA, probably bring Canzone back. And then if we're able to ultimately find a better option on the trade market than Mr. Canzone, um, we'll do that. And then the final two guys are the 
guys who should be the cornerstones of our offense. And uh, J-Rod following up his MVP season with another big year. 302 average, 17 homers, 60 ribbies, 9 out of 10 trying to steal bases in a 156 WRC+. plus has a 4.1 war here, uh, one of the better figures in the American League. And uh, if he has a second half similar to his first half of the year, he's going to make a strong case to win back-to-back -back MVP awards, particularly if we're able to uh, win a second consecutive division title. J-Rod is certainly not the problem with our offense. Juan Soto who, according to our owner, is not a power hitter, um, even though he led the American League with 50 home runs last year, has been uh, disappointing in terms of the power production, to be fair. Uh, 274 average, 12 doubles, 7 homers, and 33 ribbies, and 197 at-bats. Did spend some time on the IL. He has walked 39 times. His on-base percentage is 388, OPS 839, 133 WRC plus. It hasn't been the otherworldly Juan Soto that we expected and hoped for when we brought him on board, but he has certainly been a solid offensive player for us. So as I think about what we need to do next, um, definitely need to improve kind of that DH corner outfield spot. Um, I think Sending Jolks down and giving Canzone another shot um, probably makes sense. I was training Canzone just to play third base, not that he's particularly equipped to do it, but just to make him a little versatile when I had sent him down to AAA coming off of the injury. He was not great in Seattle, um, hitting just 202 with two homers and 14 ribbies and 84 at-bats, but... He's had a smaller sample size at this point than Jolks. And I do think looking at Canzone um, against right-handed pitching, uh, it's sad to say, given the career that uh, Mr. Goldschmidt has had, but there's an argument to be made to uh, consider playing Canzone instead of him with the fact that... Um, you know, Goldschmidt's only hitting a buck seventy-one against righties this year. I don't think we lose anything by giving it a try uh, for the next couple of weeks. I don't think Canzone is ultimately going to be the ultimate solution for us um, in terms of improving our lineup the way that we want to. But I think for a short-term option he um is at least a different lever to press than the jolks and goldschmidt levers that we've been pressing that have not been working well at this point So with bringing up Canzone, we've made a couple of changes. Uh, we have put Canzone into the lineup against right-handed pitching is our DH. Uh, so that means that Goldschmidt is a very highly paid uh, platoon player who starts only against lefties and then is a bat off the bench when we have righties starting against us. And then that also... Um, let us put J.P. Crawford back into the lineup against left-handed pitching. He's going to be our nine, no, number nine hitter. He's a lefty going against lefty pitching. But um, we mentioned that um, Nick Allen's range had uh, regressed a little bit from where we thought it was. Um, so we're going to move Allen out of shortstop and back to second. That lets us put Crawford in at shortstop. Dylan Moore eventually moves to the outfield role that Jolks was in. So we've got another left-handed bat in against right-handed pitching, which should help. Again, I don't think Canzone is going to hit a buck seventy-one against righties. So from that perspective, he should be better than Goldschmidt. And uh, Jolks was doing nothing with the bat. So at the very least, we've tightened up our defense a little bit against left-handed pitching. The team is healthy at this point. 
which is positive. Uh, we'll see if we can perhaps play a little better as we head closer to the All-Star break. And then that's going to really be a put up or shut up time for us as far as what we need to do. Hopefully there will be some more interesting options on the trade block uh, in a couple of weeks than there are right now. And unfortunately, even with those changes we made, the month of July is finishing up much as the month of June, or starting up much as the month of June did with some pretty poor play from the Mariners. We lost three out of four in the Bronx at the Yankees, and then we've lost the first two of a series in Detroit. So we've slipped down um, to eight games behind. We're only one game over 500 at this point. Um, so it's kind of a similar situation to where we were a year ago when we were uh, coming out of the month of July. I believe that we were 55 and 55, and then we played really good baseball over the last two months of the season after we made a couple of trades to ensure that we won the division. But at this point, we are tied for the final wild card spot with the Angels. You can see we're two and eight in our last ten. We've lost four in a row. So uh, those. Modest changes that we made certainly don't seem to be improving our play on the field. Probably going to sim ahead another few days uh, to the draft and then um, see who's on the trade block and uh, call it an episode uh, and give ourselves a little time to regroup and think before we uh, hopefully hit the trade market hard and hopefully also add some uh, players who could help this franchise in the future in the draft. And we've won two out of three since we checked in. Uh, we avoided the sweep in Detroit, and then we've split the first two games here in a home stand against the Braves as we uh, prepare for the All-Star break in just a few days. Uh, the first-year player draft is today. Taking a look at the standings, uh, we are... Still the final wild card team in the American League, but we're still eight games behind the Rangers, who have really separated from us uh, over the last three or four weeks. Taking a look at our team statistics, and I'm not really expecting any dramatic changes here. Uh, we're now first in the American League in pitching. Uh, but we've dipped to 13th in runs scored, so certainly helping the offense is what we need to think about doing. Our 47-45 and 45 record is actually a wor game worse than Pythagorean expectations, so I guess that's slightly positive. Uh, but we don't want to waste this excellent pitching staff, uh, so we're going to have to do something to try to improve the offense See if uh, here, about 10 days after the last time we checked in, there's anyone a little more interesting on the trading block. And pitching-wise, uh, there certainly is. Uh, Holmes was the kind of highest-regarded pitcher uh, last time we checked in. And you can see Zach Eflin and Devin Williams both on the market as well now. Uh, so there's definitely some options, um, a fair amount of options now that could certainly improve our rotation or more likely our bullpen. I mean, if we could add a Lance McCullers Jr. or a Zach Eflin for a reasonable price, uh, that would be a nice starter. I just don't know how realistic that is. Uh, helping the bullpen may be the more logical path, given that we're going to need to look for some bats and... Uh, Still no necessarily uh, world beaters as far as the um, batters who are available. Another solid catcher in Christian Bethencourt joining Murphy. Uh, you can see Wilmer Flores, Tommy Edmond, Bo Bichette available now. Uh, Bichette could certainly tighten up our infield defense, um, and he's been a average-ish offensive player the last season and a half with Toronto and St. Louis. An average-ish offensive player with a good glove um, would still be useful for us. And he's in the final year of his contract, so we could certainly afford him. They're looking for a legitimate return for him right now, though. Uh, one of the better prospects in our system in Ford or Young or a very important major leaguer. Um, so I don't think that works for us right now. Um, 
but it's still certainly something that we could explore going forward. The hope is, you know, maybe there's a bat out there that can help us a little more than what we have. Uh, it seems like he ends up on every team that I've played in OOTP 25. But Michael Conforto is back out on the trade market um, as a left-handed hitter um, against right-handed pitching. I think he's definitely better than Goldschmidt, and he's probably better than Canzone, and he's also cheap. I can't imagine he's going to cost very much. Um, guessing we can pick him up for just about any decent prospect yeah yeah there's certainly players that we would trade away for Conforto um, I'm sure we could figure that trade out don't love him but he was respectable for us a year ago and honestly at this point um, slotting in a bat that is respectable in a corner outfield slash DH type position is a pretty big upgrade from what we've been getting from some of those spots over the course of this year. So that may be a solution. Canzone has actually been hitting pretty well here in the month of July. 375, two homers, five ribbies, and 16 at-bats. So he's been kind of doing more than we could realistically expect from him um, since we brought him back in and put him into the lineup. Um, I still think just on paper, Conforto is probably better, so that's someone we'll think about, but really need an impact bat for the corner outfield. I don't know that Canzone or Conforto is really the level of player we need in a perfect world but unfortunately the world is not perfect and uh, those two may be the best options out there wilmer flores could maybe help us a little bit he's certainly having a nice year for st louis his profile doesn't suggest he's going to be a huge difference maker. Tommy Edmond out for five months with a torn PCL, so that's not going to work. I'm a little intrigued by Bo Bichette. I don't think we would pay the price to bring him on board quite yet. But if he lingers on the market for another couple of weeks... Let's see where St. Louis is in the standings. Yeah, they're out of it. 43 and 51, 15 out, last place in the NL Central. Um, it's conceivable that their price might come down a bit for Bichette. He'd help tighten up some infield defense for us, uh, likely allow us to move on from maybe a Dylan Moore or a Nick Gordon, who haven't been incredibly productive offensively, and at least get a situation where we are uh, more competent defensively across the middle infield, and also uh, hopefully at least generating league average offense from whatever position Bichette would end up taking for us. So I don't know that there is a magical silver bullet that's going to solve all of our problems on the trade market quite yet but i think there's certainly options to consider and things that we can do that would help us and uh we're going to tackle what we do in the trade market to improve this team and ensure we get back into the playoffs and what we do in the upcoming 2025 draft in our next episode i guess i will um start the draft this is going to be less exciting than uh some of the drafts that we did in our buffalo wing series in ootp 24 when i um would kind of sim through the draft before our pick and then uh 
gather the wisdom and opinions of the viewers on where we should go simply because uh, the draft pool here is so shallow that I think it's pretty uh, unlikely that there's going to be a real interesting player for us available when we do get to our pick. But um, might as well start the draft and see what the options are going to be for us before we finish the episode. And uh, pitching-wise, there are a few of the... Um, higher rated prospects out there for us at pick number 25 josh hammond um not the most pleasant person in the world to be around in terms of his personality but does have four close to me or three close to major league quality pitches right now uh, i think he can have plus stuff with above average movement and control could be an interesting starting pitcher looking for a lot of money we do have money to spend Cruz schoolcraft uh, another starting pitcher uh, another guy who has some personality quirks a potential three to four pitch arsenal uh, another guy with plus stuff above average movement think his control is kind of average also looking for a lot of money he is a lefty and then cam caminiti uh the final highly rated starter out there. Caminiti uh, boasts just a three-pitch arsenal, and it's going to be reliant on those curves and change-ups getting better than they are today and really reaching his potential there. But if he does, another guy with plus stuff, above average movement, above average control, enough stamina, um, solid at holding on runners, lefty who's only looking for a slot, um, so three interesting pitchers um, to consider looking at the batters who are available and uh, even at the 25th pick in the draft uh, you can see there's only about 10 players that we think have two and a half star potential um, as position players available so uh, the position players who were higher rated have already gone off I tend to think I'll probably end up going for a pitcher but I'm going to check in on those players quickly and let you know if there's anyone that intrigues me and there's not really anyone who's all that intriguing among these players uh, which you would expect given their potential ratings uh, their guys who on a good team are kind of borderline roster guys if they meet their full potential uh, the most interesting to me were the catcher, Masato Chilcut, like his defense, um, he'll draw some walks. Uh, supposedly he's impossible to sign, though, so he's going to be looking for an insane amount of money. Dylan Dubovic, uh, center fielder with some speed, decent defense, and competent as far as making contact and uh, should hit a few home runs as well. So he's at least interesting. Uh, Jacob Parker, right fielder, like that he's got a little bit of power in his bat, some good personality traits, decent defensively, decent speed. And then uh, the shortstop, Eli Pitts, uh, decent contact hitter, a little bit of speed, uh, not really a shortstop, a few personality quirks. So I think I'm probably leaning towards going for a pitcher just because uh, even the best of these position players are backup outfielders or borderline starters on a good team, which is really sad for a first-round pick. You'd like to at least hope that, hey, this guy can definitely be a starter for us, and uh, I just don't see... Outside of Chilcutt, who's uh, going to cost us an insane amount of money to get him on board, I don't really see anyone that I'm incredibly excited about. Uh, scouting director, not surprisingly, recommends Caminiti. Um, I like the fact that Caminiti is more reasonable in his salary demands than the other two pitchers. I don't or not salary demands but his signing bonus demands when the other two pitchers I am cautious on the fact that um, he's only potentially a three pitch guy and we need that curve and change to develop now with the development lab there's some options there to make this work that before there wouldn't have been in the coming years 
school craft, um, the low work ethic, the low intelligence, um, just not a direction that I think I'm going to go for someone who's also looking for $10 million. Although I do like the fact that he could be a three or four pitch guy and his changeup is further along than Cam and Itties is at this point. And then Josh Hammond just has almost the perfectly bad personality. Um, The only thing he needs to be the worst personality possible is to have low loyalty on top of the rest of the personality traits that he has. And he's also only a three-pitch guy. Um, granted, his changeup is further along, too. I think I'm going with Caminiti, though. Um, as I mentioned, there are levers now to press in the development lab to hopefully ensure that he does develop both that curve and change over time and he'll have the minimum three pitch arsenal that we'd certainly prefer to see from a starter and it is conceivable that all of those pitches could be well above average but to spend nine or ten million dollars on one of these guys with a lot of negative personality traits um who also don't have any guarantees that they're going to have the full repertoire of pitches you'd want for a starter um, just doesn't make sense to me. So I think I'm probably leaning towards Cam and Itty. Uh, if you've got opinions on that, let me know. And if you've got opinions on what you think we should be doing in the uh, trade market, would be helpful to hear those as well. Until our next episode, thanks so much for watching and hope you have a great day.